It's a beautiful day here in the Caribbean, uh, the Eastern Caribbean to be precise, where we shall be having a wonderful conversation today with one of Africa's brightest, a professor of immunology and medical microbiology. He studied abroad, practiced briefly back home, and then migrated once again to lecture at one of the medical colleges here in the Commonwealth of Dominica. My name is Martin Sobu and this is a chat with a professional, the show that has been designed to X-ray the activities of professional individuals and corporate bodies. Right after the break we shall be meeting our guest who you definitely will be delighted to watch. Please stay. <laughs> A professor of immunology and medical microbiology, uh, Raymond Adebi is an associate dean at the Ross University School of Medicine here in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Did I hear somebody say, wow, yes, wow. Yes, after uh, his education in the United States, he came back home, practiced briefly. He was actually a senior lecturer at the University of Ibada uh, before leaving for the Dominica. And today, it is my delight to welcome Professor Adebi. Professor Adebi, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, Prof, would like you to share your experience studying and working abroad. And, of course, why, why Dominica? Yeah. Well, I guess and that's really a very, very good question. Uh, uh, originally, um, I had planned to, to study in Nigeria. But then I got the opportunity to travel to, to the U.S. So I went to study at the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis. And then I did some graduate work at the University of Missouri in Columbia. Um, after that, I returned to Nigeria to teach at Ibadan, the University of Ibadan. And I worked briefly at the, at the University College Hospital in the immunology unit. Um, so coming to Dominica was... Um, in a sense, by chance. In another sense, it was uh, came out of a, uh, a need that I felt to move out of Nigeria. Because at the time that I was at Ibadan, um, there was um, scarcity of funding for education and for research. And so um, it was difficult to get things done then. I don't know how much has improved now. But then it was quite difficult. One had to go out to get any kind of work done. So I had that desire to move somewhere else where I could do something, where I could do more work. And so when I got the opportunity to come to, to join Ross University, at the time I didn't know it was in Dominica, I thought it was in New York City, because they're actually based in New York. The head office is in New York. So I got the invitation to join them, and then I learned that it was going to be in Dominica. So I did come here. And um, when I came here, I saw that the place is quite welcoming. Uh, the climate is just like it is in Nigeria. Um, it's a black country. Um, so I felt quite comfortable, and so I decided to stay. I came initially just for one year, not as my initial appointment. But after I got here and I got to like the place, I decided to, to, to stay home. Thank you very much. Uh, what was your original course of study? Um, initially, I, I majored in biochemistry and then went on to Minnesota and uh, did medical sciences and did great work in ma microbiology and immunology. Finished with a PhD in clinical pathology, specializing in immunology. And the research um, at the PhD level was in the immunology of malaria. So I tried to determine the immune response to malaria. Um, in fact, we, we had a, a good run trying to find the receptors for the malaria parasites and red blood cells. But that was my initial goal, to try and um, identify what the receptors are on the human red cells for malaria parasites. But generally, I, I studied the immunology of malaria and extended that to the immunology of infectious diseases generally, especially tropical diseases. Very good. 
Uh, how long now have you been here? I've been here more than 20 years. More than 20 years. That's, you should be a citizen by now. Yes, yes, yes. Now, what has been the experience like, you know, living and working here? It's been very good. Um, Dominica is uh, it's a very quiet place, a very peaceful place. People are very welcoming. And that was, my, that was the first impression I got when I landed here. And then the university itself is, um, is very well funded, which is a major attraction. It's very well funded. Um, one could... We don't do um, any... We don't do formal research as such. But in terms of education, in terms of promoting education, in terms of um, innovation in education, the school is about maybe one of the best in the world. In terms of technology, use of technology in education, um, using various modalities for delivery of material, because we don't depend just on lectures. We develop up, um, like group learning, um, internet-based learning, um, all kinds of approaches are used to deliver the material. And in fact, our students even have access to our lectures online. So after we give the lectures, the lectures are recorded, they can go home and look at it again and again as many as they want. So, in that sense, um, I, I, I like that about the school, and so I chose to remain with them. Okay. R recently, we've witnessed, you know, um, an upsurge of young Nigerians migrating to the Dominica to study medicine. Uh, what do you think is the attraction, and what do you have here that isn't available in Nigeria? Well, I think I think most of them ultimately want to go to the U.S. because. At both universities here, both medical schools here, um, the, f the four or five year programs are not done all in Dominica. Like at Ross University, we run a four to f well, about a four year program. Only the first two years are held in Dominica until they get to the level of what we call the USMLE Step 1, the Step 1 exams. Now, the Step 1 exams is a universal exam administered in the US for all medical students, regardless of where they study. So when the students come to Dominica, once they can pass the USMLA step one, then they are qualified, they're eligible to do their um, clinical training anywhere in the US. And after the clinical training, then they will take the USMLA step two, and that entitles them to practice anywhere in the US. So I think that may be the attraction, that they know that once they come here, they get the foundation upon which they can build and they can work in the U.S. I think most of them ultimately want to practice in the U.S. Okay. I, I know a few have come back to Nigeria, but I met two in Lagos over um, this past year who studied here and are back in Lagos. Um, but I think for the majority, the attraction is that once they study here, they can get the qualifications that are um, acceptable in the US. So they can just move right across and, and they can practice in the US. Is there anything you think is lacking in Nigeria, specifically in medical training, uh, that uh, lures many young Nigerians to study abroad instead of instead of Nigeria? Oh. I wouldn't I don't think I don't think very much is lacking. I think the major problem well, going by my personal experience, I think the major problem was that of funding. Because Nigeria has people, Nigeria has personnel. And so I mustn't belittle our medical schools. I mean, I was at Ibada and well, had the best brains. I, mean, I know that. I mean, but I think the, the challenge was that there was not enough funding to keep people down, I mean, to keep people rooted there. No motivation. Uh, no motivation, practice. yes. Uh, because you, you know what you can do. But because of limitations, you, you cannot get them done. We have surgeons who are outstanding. But you can't do real good surgery when there's no power. When you know when you can't rely on basic things. I, I think that is the main problem. Personally, that, that's what I think. Professional handshake. Professional profile. Nigeria is the most important country in Sub-Saharan Africa. In-depth analysis of professional issues of education, the collapse of culture in Nigeria. Even with cheating, we can't pass. Yeah. With the, uh, not the cheating. <laughs> We've not done enough. 
there's still more to be done. Join Martin Zobu every week on this channel as he chats with the professionals on the program. A chat with the professionals. A program designed to X-ray the activities of professional individuals and corporate bodies. Hello viewers and you're welcome. Join us. Now, you have an association of Nigerians in Dominica and uh, you are the president. Okay, C could you narrate your experience bringing together Nigerians here and um, do you have entrepreneurs or businessmen apart from students who are members of this association? Well, the association was um, formally launched maybe about 10 years ago. But even before then, we found a need to get together because um, um, there are quite a few Nigerians on the island and um, I think the first time we got together was when, that's a long time ago, when Chief uh, Mika Yaoku was um, campaigning to become Commerce Secretary General. So he was here and we, at the time, wanted to meet with him. Uh, and so we decided that we had to get together formally. And then after he left, we sat down and we formed the association, had a constitution. Um, so uh, most of our membership are students, um, which makes it difficult to manage because students are very transient. They're here for two, at most three years, and then they're gone. Um, but there are a few that are resident here, and not too many business people. Most are professionals. Um, in fact, most are doctors. Um, those who live here and nurses. Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, I think there is only one person that I know who is in business. Um, I, think he's in, um, I think he trades in electronics. Or I know sometimes he sells and buys vehicles. But on, on the whole, we don't have many businessmen, mostly professionals, mainly in medicine actually. So you have Nigerian nurses here too? Mm. A lot of nurses, yes. We have a lot of Nigerian nurses. Wow. I see. Now, do you think the practice environment uh, here is, is equally better than Nigeria as well? I think um, for them it might be it might be better. Again, in the sense of facilities, um, I do not think that they're that better qualified, you know. But I think that um, because of the access or, or the nearness to the U.S. Um, they tend to, they have better facilities here, and I think the experience is a little bit richer because of the closeness. For example, we have a very close link with, with Miami hospitals, such that we do referrals, and that enriches your knowledge. That, that kind of cross you know, pollination, I, I might say, it, it, it's, it's very useful. It's very in medicine, it's, it's very useful. What has been your relationship with Dominicans and indeed the government of Dominica? The government of Dominica is, uh, is sort of a hands-off government in terms of, uh, that means they really don't interfere with our operations. Um, where I work, the, 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 there is an agreement between the university and the government and that agreement is, is, is respected and so we enjoy a very, very I would say excellent relationship with the government. Um, as a matter of fact, um, Dominican students that come to Ross University do not pay any fees. That's part of the agreement, that we will train Dominicans and, um, and they don't pay any tuition fees at all. They might need to pay some money when they get to the US for clinicals, but while they're here doing the um, basic science uh, courses, they do, they do not pay any fees at all. And we take about two or three every semester, which makes about six or so every year. And they're trained for free. So how then does the school survive? It, it, that means the school was actually built for foreigners. Yes. The, I can speak for Ross University. Ross University is a U.S. medical school. 90% of our students are Americans. So it's mainly for American students. Um, we do have some Canadian students and others, even Nigerian students who are with us, are there to train for the American market. So the, the target of the university is the U.S. And most of our students are American students. Most are on U.S. government-backed loans. 
some have the money personally to pay, but the majority are on government back loans. Okay. So it's for the American market. Okay. okay, so how often do you go home? Oh, not, so, not often enough. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was home last year. Okay. Uh, my mother is in Lagos, so I need to go more often. Um, um, I would say on the average, maybe once three years, I would say. Okay. Um, there was a time I was going more often because my, um, I have, um, at, there was a time when my daughters were going to school at Ibada. And so when they were there, I was home two times a year, sometimes more. But after they graduated and moved out of, out of Nigeria, they're now based in Canada. There are two of them in Canada now. Um, in fact, one went back it's in Port Harcourt, but they're two in Canada. So after they um, finished in Ibada, then I, was, I stopped going to Ibada that, that frequently. Mm -hmm. But now with my mother, I, I need to go more often. I plan, God willing, I plan to be there again next year for a birthday. That's, I hope she doesn't watch this and, and be expecting me. <laughs> but I hope I'll be there. It's okay. Uh, now I just want to ask you a very sensitive question. How close is Nigerian government with those of you in this part of the world? And do you have a government presence anywhere close? Well, there is a high commission in Trinidad, and they represent the government. But um, beyond that, there's not very much. And how close is Trinidad to Dominica? Um, not as close as we would like it to be. I, I wish it was better. And I think that depends on who is in charge in Trinidad. Because to be fair to Trinidad, we've had ambassadors in Trinidad who were very close to us. By the time we had um, Mrs. Um, I think it's Kurubu. Uh, I don't remember her full name right now. She was there in the around 2000. And she was excellent. She was there. In fact, she came to my house to have dinner with us. And, and, and we had a reception for her. She was very close to us. She was like a mother to us. Um, then there was a time we had um, Eddie Agbe, who was also outstanding. He was outstanding. So it depends on, I, I think, depends on who is in charge in training that. Some are very open, some are more conscious. But what's the distance between Dominica and Trinidad? It's, it's far. It's um, by air. It takes you like maybe no direct flights anyway. So um, if there was a direct flight, it might take you maybe two, three hours by air. It's not terribly far. But because of the, di the difficulty of direct air, air yeah. transportation, it might take you longer. When you have to island hop, they might take the whole day to go to Trinidad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But one could communicate by emails and by telephone and so on. So one can still keep in touch even without physically moving, uh, okay. going to Trinidad or coming to Dominica. Okay. So do you feel at home and were protected by your home government in Dominica? That's a tough one. Uh, I must say no. I must say no. Um, and I say that because um, quite often you 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 get very slow response to requests. And, and that's why I have to say no. Um, like, we've had cases here where people were in trouble. With, um, well, many Nigerians, some Nigerians don't behave themselves, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And we had a person here once who was involved in some fraud and um, who was to be deported. And um, it was difficult to get response from, the, from, from our home government. It was very difficult. I was involved in it myself, and our secretary, Dr. Marie Bichet, was also very involved, and it was quite difficult to get a response. In fact, ultimately, I think the government of Dominica had to pay for his deportation. Could, could you estimate the size of Nigerians in Dominica? At the moment, I think, I think we should be in uh, between 100 and 200, not too big. Okay, not to it's, it's not yeah, so okay. But in, in my in, in uh, my um, personal view is that even if there are only ten people, mm -hmm. there should be representation. Sure. Even if there are only ten, that's my personal view. Mm -hmm. And so what I have said in the past was that maybe the High Commission could open um, a small office in Dominica, mm -hmm. have something like an honorary council. And that is done by many countries in Dominica. Many countries do not have full missions. In fact, some don't even have offices. But they'll appoint an honorary consul 
and that person uses his personal office as the consular office. Mm -hmm. So, so the government does not really need to spend money to create an office because that's not necessary. Mm -hmm. They don't need to buy furniture. Mm -hmm. Just um, appoint someone as an honorary consul who operates from his own office. Mm -hmm. And I think that works. It's done, um, I know that the Swedish consul here, that's a Dutch consul, that's a Spanish consul. There are several countries that have consuls in Dominica. Mm -hmm. And that's how they operate. I have friends who are consuls. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if Nigeria had an honorary consul in Dominica, we might have better representation because he would then have a direct link, official link, mm -hmm. with Trinidad. Mm -hmm. And then from Trinidad with Abuja. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that will, I hope, will improve the relationship between Nigerians here mm -hmm. and the home government. So what would be your immediate request from our home government? You know, you just mentioned the opening of an honorary consul in Dominica, but are there other things you would want the government to do to ensure that the lives of every Nigerian is not just protected, but made as comfortable as possible? Um, especially uh, considering that Dominica is also a commonwealth country. I, I think one of the most important things might be for um, the High Commissioner to maybe an annual visit to Dominica, maybe more often, but at least an annual visit. Just, um, I'll give an example. At the university, the, the American consul is based in Barbados, but he comes to Dominica maybe two, three times every year. And every time he comes to Dominica, he makes a stop on our campus. He actually comes to the campus and he speaks with all American students. Um, he, he, uh, he will not entertain visa applications, of course, but mm -hmm. he, his primary interest is to protect Americans in Dominica. Mm -hmm. So he comes at least once a year, I think it's more than once a year, and he always comes to the campus, mm -hmm. has hours mm -hmm. that anybody mm -hmm. who is an American citizen could speak with him. Mm -hmm. And that sort of thing I think we could use. Mm -hmm. Have the ambassador come, it could be once a year, mm -hmm. and meet with everybody. What are your problems? What, what do you need from us? Mm -hmm. you know, some people have passports that are expiring. Mm -hmm. They have to hustle mm -hmm. to get renewals. Mm -hmm. you know, they run up and down. Man, it can be, it can be, mm -hmm. can be a big problem sometimes. You and I were discussing off camera about putting together a forum to bring together Nigerian students for some sort of mentorship, you know, to give them a sense of belonging. What would you be requesting from the government, um, individuals or organizations, to ensure that this uh, dream is realized? Well, uh, I think that is, I don't think that's something that the government can do. Um, that's personal, that's my personal. I, don't, I think that's something that we can do for ourselves. Um, my view would be that students who are in Dominica should try to keep close to the elders. I mean, there are several experienced professionals in Dominica. Um, we have somebody who has a hospital here. Um, there are professors at the two universities. So I think the students should, or maybe we should um, appoint ourselves as mentors but then, it's one thing to say you're a mentor, it's another for your mentee to respond to, to what you're proposing. Uh, so, so it goes both ways, but I think we have to do it for ourselves. I don't think, I don't think a government can do that. I think that we as individuals should, as old individuals, should offer mentorship to the younger ones. And then on their part, have to play their role to live up to what we expect. I'll give you an example. One of the students, I had a professor from Nigeria, um, one professor Femi Williams, professor of pathology at Ibadan. So he was the one that asked me to come to Ibadan. We were in Minneapolis, and that was the time I got a B in histology. And he was so hard on me. He told me I was a disgrace to Nigeria, forgetting the B. You know. He was always pushing me. I had to make Nigeria proud. You have to do. So, and that is kind of pushed that one needs, you know. And so it's good for a mentor to do that. The mentee must respond to it. You know, anytime he was going on his ground, on his rounds, he would just call me. If I was free, I would go with him. As the president of Nigerians in Dominica, what are your plans to ensure that this is achieved? Well, um, the the the, uh, the only way it can be achieved is is I, I think the main problem that we have 
is that a lot of our students, I don't know if they feel a bit shy, I'm not sure what it is, but my doors are, are, have always been open, but they don't come in. The students just don't come in. Um, uh, I personally um, sometimes organize meetings, um, sometimes I even just for a small get together, just get people you know, to, to interact. Mm -hmm. But you find that many of our students stay away. Mm -hmm. Even when we call general meetings, they don't show up. So, so it makes it difficult to, to have an influence mm -hmm. on, on what they do here and on how well they perform here. Okay. It's all right. We'll be glad to partner with you on this, and we hope it helps in instilling the desired discipline and, by extension, uh, redirects their thinking towards self uh, confidence and um, encourage professionalism as they mature into core practice of their chosen careers. That'll be good. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Debbie, for sharing your thoughts and time with us, and we wish you a successful sojourn in Dominica. You're welcome. Thanks very much. Okay. Well, there's actually nothing more to add to what Professor Adebi has said today. Uh, let's see how we can encourage all Nigerians from every part of the world our government must, as a matter of urgency and importance, ensure that every Nigerian, irrespective of where he or she resides, has that pride of flying our flag, the green, white, green flag. And the only way we can achieve that is to ensure that wherever we live or wherever Nigerians are, that the presence of our government is felt. Should anything happen to one single Nigerian, it should be the concern of not just the government, but every single individual called Nigerian. That's much we can take on the show today, Chat to the Professional. Till next time when I come your way, let's see how we can keep encouraging these young ones to be better professionals, as well as encouraging the practicing professionals to do better in whatever chosen career they find themselves in so that together we can encourage good governance in Africa through our professional practice. I'll see you again.